All right, this third uh, segment here uh, says energy and biodynamics. Now, we've, we've, we're all familiar with the idea that you've got minerals in the soil <coughs> and you've got microorganisms and other larger organisms in the soil. So in terms of minerals and biology, we're, we're pretty comfortable with those ideas. It's where it gets a little bit stranger for most people is to think about energy. What's the dynamics? What processes are going on in your paddocks? Because uh, if the right processes are going on, then the biology will follow along with those processes. And if the biology follows along with it, then the minerals will follow along too. So you want to have the kinds of, of activities, the energetics of your environment, you want to have some way of working with that because if you can do that, then you can do more for less money than any other thing you can do. If you establish, and we were talking about homeopathics, uh, if you establish the right patterns of energy, then it can be, uh, it can be, it, it'll, it'll amaze you. It can be very profound, very, uh, uh, um, uh, what, what would I best say? It, it, it can have the most, the strongest effects and do it for absolutely the least effort. Now, I realize there's a sort of a Protestant work ethic in, amongst some of our, our English-speaking uh, people that believes it, that it has to be hard work or it isn't of any value. But, but uh, uh, I think that we can kind of, uh, as farmers, that we can kind of uh, look at our, our jobs and everything, and they're tough enough without doing everything the hard way. So if you have that, that problem that you feel like you have to work real hard, well then uh, uh, there's still room for doing it the easy way. <laughs> You'll find enough things that are hard enough. So one of the things that, that uh, is kind of interesting in this regard Here's a dynamic is when you graze. The pattern that you have of how you graze your paddocks has a profound effect on what you get as a result. So people here who've done RCS or holistic resource management or whatever, and they know that if they can go out there with a very quick and intensive graze and then get off of it again, it gives the plants a, ch a chance to get up on their growth curve to where they're really cooking. And their roots go down deeper that way, they catch a lot more carbon, they build a lot more organic matter in the soil, and you end up doubling your stock rate down the road because you're going growing three times as much tucker. And you're doing it with just sunshine and rain and stuff. It's the pattern of activity that you're using that does the, you know, the profound effect. Because if you, were, if you had set stock and you graze it off and every time it grows a little bit, well then it's nipped in the bud before it ever gets up on its growth curve, well that pattern of activity will defeat you. So you've got to find the right patterns of activity that uh, give you that dynamic, that energetic effect. Uh, it's not like to work with the farm energy that you have to have these big electric transmission towers and be goosing the earth with electric current. Uh, <laughs> that's not how it works. So we're really talking about tickling things with a feather rather than hitting them with uh, an atomic blast. There's a principle in fluid dynamics that was discovered and formulated back in the mid late uh, 19 sorry 19th century. 
That would have been around 1870, 1880 in that range there. And it was an Irish physicist working with fluid dynamics who discovered that a microscopic change at a point can affect large scale changes in the medium. Now that kind of thing is really intriguing to people specializing in weather prediction because the whole idea that just a microscopic change at a point in the weather pattern can shift the whole weather pattern on the planet so that you have a totally different result. And this was something that was discovered by a mathematician named Edward Lorenz back in about, I think it was 1953. And he was working with weather modeling on one of the old IBM mainframe computers with the punch cards and the magnetic tapes and everything that a room this big with computer equipment wouldn't hold a candle to this laptop. And he was modeling these weather prediction uh, uh, formulas and his computer crashed and he had to uh, re sort of reboot it from his printouts and when he did he got a totally different result because he dropped a couple decimal points out there in the uh, millionth range or something like that and he got a totally different result. It was just a tiny fraction of the uh, prediction model he was using that changed. So this whole idea that we can have a profound effect with just the tiniest change in the pattern of energy is very well established. It's a, it's a, hmm, it's almost a grandfather concept in physics. Been around a long time. Uh, so if you thought you had to have a bigger hammer, well, relax, because you might only need a smaller feather. Now, this bloke here in the picture, Rudolf Steiner, was a person who evidently thought outside the box an awful lot more than most people. And by that, I, like, I really like this illustration here because it shows the difference between thinking inside the circle and thinking outside the circle. We represent a circle ordinarily with uh, describing the circumference as a function of the radius. See? This dot out here is at the radius from the center of the circumference related to the circumference of the circle. So we're looking at that as a function of the center of the circle. But this is another way, the same number of points, but there's a tangent line that touches the circumference at the point. So you're touching the circumference of the circle there with a line that is coming from the surroundings instead of the interior of the circle. So we could define, we can define this circle, the simplest geometric uh, object, from its context as well as from its content. And Steiner says we would never develop a mathematics of living organisms unless we do both. We have to look at the organism not only based on what's inside of the organism, but what context that organism is situated in. <laughs>